Hey loves, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about using poetry to process deep emotions, both reading and writing poetry. First, I'm gonna tell you about some of the benefits, and then I'm going to read you some poetry from when I was going through a particularly intense time. It gets deep. Before we get into it though, my name is Miko, and I'm the founder of Miko Care an integrative health community focused on self-care, primarily using technology. Take a moment to subscribe to my channel for more tips on self-care with love. So poetry is a really effective way of expressing emotions in a way that kind of separates you from the, the experience because you're getting into a flow that I believe connects your mind and your heart. And so it helps you to see the experience from a different perspective you know, give a little detachment and also transform the experience into something beautiful, which can be a form of empowerment, really. I know that's kind of a, you know, a word that's used a lot these days. And um, in a sense, I argue that it's really, you will always have the power and it's about taking your, your power back. It's not about someone else giving you power but that's a digression. Uh, so poetry often springs from us in difficult times, and it's something that is great for emotional processing. And if you're going through an intense time, just even reading poetry can start to help you feel that freedom of expression, maybe through someone else's words. And When we, when we express ourselves from, from that space of vulnerability and just poetic expression, it's almost like we enter into a new space, a, a healing space. There is actually a website called poetrytherapy.org and they have a little description of what poetry therapy is. Poetry therapy is the use of language, symbol, and story in therapeutic, educational, growth, and community building capacities. It relies upon the use of poems, stories, song lyrics, imagery, and metaphor to facilitate personal growth, healing, and greater self-awareness. Bibliotherapy, narrative, journal writing, metaphor, storytelling, and ritual are all, are all within the realm of poetry therapy. So there's actually a study, a small scale study that was done with some students in the UK using literacy, um, it's actually called creative mental health literacy, using poetry in particular as a form of managing mental health conditions. And here's a little snippet from that. Amelia used her poetry to manage her mental health beyond the initial writing process. She saw her poems as resources that she could revisit later. For example, if she experienced the same emotion or thought again, when she revisited a poem, she would often refine her writing to better communicate her thoughts and feelings or to be more aesthetically pleasing. This helped her further develop a more objective or critical perspective on her experiences, which she found helped her develop a better understanding of her emotions and mental health systems, symptoms. Amelia also used her poems as a resource that she could read rather than work on again. The poem served as reminders of the creative writing process and allowed her to relive the positive effects the process had previously had on her mental health. 
she was also able to compare her current situation to the situation she had captured in a poem, and this helped her identify the progress she had made and reflect on changes in her life and mental health. I'll include the link in the description. So at the end, I'm going to read a poem that I wrote during breast cancer reconstruction. And it's pretty deep. It's, it expresses a lot of things that would be very difficult to communicate in conversation. Now there's this other paper called Finding the Words to Say It, The Healing Power of Poetry by Robert Carroll. And he writes about how poetry can help us to talk about things or write about things that are taboo to talk about. There is a poem written by Carlene Schaff, which is beautiful and is a great example of how poetry can help us process things. It's called, I Can't. I can't, I just can't. I can't do it all. I can't be all things to all people at all times and under all circumstances. I can't be the one to always change my plans to suit another's. I can't be the one to pick up after others all the time. I can't work all day and stop at the grocery and cook dinner and have it ready by 6.30. I can't carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. I need some support too and a rest. I can't, can't, can't cantaloupe, can't canticle, can't cantilever, cantina, cantata, cantankerous, canon, canopy, canard, candelabra, can, can. Can I? Can I just do it? Can I do it all? Can I ration my time to allow for my priorities? Can I ask others to share the burdens? Can I refuse this role of superwoman? Can I just say no? I can. I can just say no. I can just say I'm out of the business of doing it all. I can take time for myself to breathe and dream or just sit quietly and I will. That was a beautiful expression of what she was going through and it's something that you can do too. Let me know in the comments if you write poetry or if you've even just written one piece of poetry in your life to express something that was, you know, that, that you needed to get out of you and into the world. And if you have poetry that you like to read, who's your favorite poet? Or what's your favorite poem? I'd love to know. Okay, so I promised I would read a poem that I wrote that expressed some pretty deep emotions that were bottled up inside. And this was during breast cancer reconstruction. And as if I remember correctly, I actually wrote this while I was waiting at the surgeon's office. So the great thing about nowadays with our smartphones is that we can just open up, whether it's Google Docs or Evernote, Notion, Notepad, whatever you have, you can just open it up wherever you are and just express yourself poetically. And if you've never done it before, give it a try. You might find it really freeing. All right, so we'll dive right in. This poem is called Ghosts of What Was Me. Crying and crying and crying, 
bitterly, resentfully, mourning some kind of loss while a rhythm pulses in my ears, pushing out what was, bringing to the surface the hate I could not bear before, cleansing what was not love, letting it crash on the beach of mind. The soul has no deadlines, knows no time. Bring my soul up to my body, introduce it some new rhymes, make it shiver with sensation, make it make some sense of time. If it loves me, let it know me while I dance inside my dark. Let it press itself against me. Let it leave its fucking mark. Tears stain my freckled cheeks, dry and leave their salty ink. Wash away all trace of sorrow. Disappear then down the sink. We'll smile again tomorrow. Life ebbs and flows and hey, we could never love the sunshine if it didn't storm, okay? It's perfectly unreasonable to let love be so unbound to let death be a better honor than to make a burden sound. Let us rail against a system, deeply broken, richly flawed, and let us put first the practical, make a purpose a new God. And when we sit inside our weakness, let us silent drink the bitter brew, because what's the point of loving if it's just me and not you too? It takes God a year to answer, I said, hey, if you're around and you've got love that likes to listen, next year the God particle is found. Meanwhile, with the passion of the wretched, those damn fools who choose to fall, I sank into the depths of barely living, hoping to feel my soul's call. And the dis-ease grew inside me, the distance from it all. I felt the cold, the fire, the beauty of the fall. I loved in ways some said were wretched. Every moment bared my soul, surrendered to the unforgiving, made the broken bits my whole. Preached some kind of understanding, made some peace with death, laughed in the face of unknowing while I also held my breath. I dare you bring my soul into my body, call me from the cosmic realm where parts of me still linger, buffering my big heart's overwhelm. I couldn't tell you till I'd done it, how a body can house a soul and a heart can be so broken while its person looks so whole. And so what comes the rejoinder because we've learned not to care when it comes to our inside broken, the things hidden beyond what's there. And oh no, comes the chorus, Our world's becoming broke, but let's go on like we used to, wave it off or drink or smoke. Meanwhile, there is a stretching of the things we cannot see, and the fragments of the broken cut the hearts of you and me. When we see beyond the color, when we're shattered just enough, we open to a love that's tender, gentle as it is tough, and our souls make some new rapture imagining a bliss, coming and going, life giving us a kiss. With its kiss comes the shivers of a soul and body again, of a love that keeps on spinning while we dance inside its rain. My tears are dried now, careful focus on my words. What do they say about my loving? Silence is all she heard. Let me sit here in that silence take my place beside the damned because love's the destination and there's a bloody traffic jam. Meanwhile, time's ticking and all I hear are words and the rainy pitter patter of water on windows falling out of skies like dying birds. What's a poem from the fog from in between the cradle and the brave where the storm is never ending and I'm a soul too late to save. We are all for the heaven, far too pretty for the hell. Put off our present for a future and fall down times well. It's a fucked up kind of loving. I must be missing something here. I must be awfully bad at giving and receiving too, I fear. 
just fly, they say, from their rich living. They don't see the heavy chains that hold me to Earth's center while my spirit flies and flies again. It's an impossible living. If I'm honest, I feel scorn when they speak of ghostly living who have never been reborn. Oh, when I seek a higher way, it's more acceptable to say than to lean into the tumble, find the obstacle, the way. Lean into the gritty living so the tired can feel some love. My heart is way too heavy. Messy too. Go get a glove. Sometimes it's much too heavy, and in spite of all the pain that we turn into sensation, tears rain on my face again. And the biggest pain of all is that no one seems to see that inside something so pretty hide the ghosts of what was me. So as you can see, I wrote that in 2019, September 15th, 2019, and it just came up. And once it said everything that it needed to say, it was done. So I don't know if that inspired you or scared you. Emotional processing can be pretty intense sometimes. And yet it's one of the biggest things we can do for our healing beyond, beyond the physical practices that we can do. Adding the emotional component is, is very powerful. In fact, if we think about our neurochemicals and the chemicals that we produce in our body in response to the food, to the environment, all those things, it's, it's all, it's alchemical. You know, there's an alchemy that comes through processing the emotions that influences everything that we do. So I will see you in the next video. Do like, share, comment, and subscribe for more self-care that might be beyond what you typically think of as self-care. And remember always that you are awesome and worthy of deep love, and excellent self-care. Much love. Nico.